the headlines of this hour on VTV News. High-quality, low-emission rice project in Mekong Delta implemented. And transportation projects in the northern region speed up progress. In our world news, North Korea blows up roads near South Korean border as tensions soar. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning, it is 8 a.m. local time in Hanoi and you're watching VTV News. I'm Huyen Chen with the top stories. Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm paid a floral tribute and offered incense to fallen heroes at Guangxi Ancient Citadel, special relic site in Guangxi province on October 15th. The state leader and his entourage observe a minute of silence to remember fallen heroes who sacrificed their lives during the fierce 81 day and night campaign to defend the Guangxi Citadel and Guangxi Town in 1972. This historic battle played a pivotal role in the success at the negotiating table leading to the Paris Agreement in 1973 and ultimately paving the way for the rapid and powerful offensive that culminated the historic spring victory of 1975, fully liberating the South and reunifying the country. The delegation also laid wreaths and offered incense at the Road 9 National Martyr Cemetery, the final resting place of over 10,800 heroes and martyrs who lost their lives on the Road 9 front. Guangxi battlefield and in neighboring Laos during the resistance war against the U.S. They also paid their respects at the Tung Sơn National Martyr Cemetery, the final resting place of 10,263 martyrs, primarily from Brigade 559. Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm welcome Chang Ho Jin, Special Advisor on Foreign Affairs and Security to President of the Republic of Korea, Yoon suk yeol during a reception in Hanoi on October 15th. The Vietnamese leader praised the significance of Chang's working trip, which followed his phone talks with President Yoon on September 3rd. He thanked Yoon and the Republic of Korea's government for their timely support for Vietnam in the wake of the recent Typhoon Yagi. Chang commended the development of the Republic of Korea and Vietnam relations over the past three decades, affirming that the Republic of Korea considers Vietnam a key partner in advancing its strategy for a free, peaceful and a prosperous Indo-Pacific and the Korea ASEAN Solidarity Initiative. Underlying Vietnam's consistent viewpoints on major issues, Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm affirmed that Vietnam always pay attention to and stays ready to actively contribute to the maintenance of peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. Chang articulated the Republic of Korea government's stance, underscoring its desire to promote lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. Regarding the EC issue, both sides agree on the need to maintain regional peace, stability, cooperation and development while respecting international law, including the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Now, on October 15th, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching and National Assembly Chairman Chen Thanh Minh co-chaired the conference of the Government Party Committee with the National Assembly. The Prime Minister stated that at the 8th session, the government is expected to submit 81 files and documents to the National Assembly, including 28 draft laws for comments and consideration. This substantial workload requires increased effort and more active, effective collaboration between the government and the National Assembly. National Assembly Chairman Chen Thanh Minh emphasized the importance of the 8th session, which will address major issues to promptly remove institutional and policy obstacles, unlock resources, and overcome bottlenecks. The National Assembly Chairman requested that the agencies of the National Assembly and the government coordinate more closely and innovate the process of building up professional, scientific, timely, feasible and effective laws. He also stressed the need to strengthen control of power, prevent corruption and negativity, and fight against group interests in lawmaking.
Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính hosted a reception in Hanoi on October 14 for visiting governor of Gamma Prefecture Yamamoto Ichita and representatives of 25 businesses from the Japanese locality. The Prime Minister expressed his belief that the visit will contribute to enhancing cooperation between Gamma and Vietnam and materializing the comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries, established in late 2023. The Vietnamese leader lauded the determination, efforts and initiatives by the governor and Gamma's authorities in enhancing the relations with Vietnam over the past time, especially with its Hanam province, the Ministry of Labor, Invalids and Social Affairs, the Ministry of Planning and Investment and the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, and in promoting the Vietnam-Japan University project. For his part, Yamamoto said he is interested in strengthening cooperation with Vietnam, particularly in high-quality workforce, appreciating the country's great investment opportunities and the outstanding development of its localities, including Hanam. According to the governor, many participating enterprises have decided to invest in Vietnam, while many others express their interest in the investment, especially in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính chaired a conference on Tuesday in Cần Thơ City on implementing the project to develop a million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice linked to a green growth in the Mekong Delta region by 2030. Leaders from the government, various ministries and 12 provinces and cities in the Mekong Delta attended the event. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Vietnam is the first country to implement a large-scale low-emission rice production project. The project aims to support farmers in the Mekong Delta, advance the rice industry, address climate change, and contribute to Vietnam's net zero emissions target. At the conference, the Prime Minister outlined five guiding principles for effective project implementation. Developing sustainable rice production requires digital technology, green development, and innovation. A strong commitment to rice cultivation is essential for breakthroughs in the Mekong Delta. Diversifying resources, including central and local funding, public-private partnerships, foreign investments, and community contributions, is crucial. Resources must be utilized effectively and directly allocated to localities, production facilities, and farmers. We should leverage the political system's strength while prioritizing local self-reliance and mobilizing community and business capabilities. The Prime Minister urged accelerated efforts to achieve a million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice by 2030 at the latest. He outlined 11 tasks, including planning stable raw material areas by the second quarter of next year, applying science and technology, and building high-quality rice brands. Relevant ministries are tasked with developing preferential policies and presenting proposals to the National Assembly. The banking sector is required to support a credit package of about 1.2 billion US dollars, while the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development will handle the borrowing from development partners. The Prime Minister also asked the Ministry of Finance to establish a fund for the project, using state capital, carbon credit sales, and other capital sources. Further tasks include connecting domestic and foreign markets, diversifying products, and developing a comprehensive project for the Mekong Delta to reduce emissions and promote carbon credit sales by the second quarter of next year. The Prime Minister also emphasized strengthening ties among enterprises, cooperatives, and localities to enhance rice product development and urged international partners to provide support. He called for uniting farmers in various ways to promote self-reliance and insisted on forming a steering committee to implement the project. National Assembly Chairman Chen Thanh Minh on October 14 attended a ceremony to honor outstanding Vietnamese farmers and cooperatives nationwide in 2024 on the occasion of the 94th anniversary of the Vietnam Farmers Union, October 14, 1930 to 2024. Speaking of the Viet event, the top legislator said the union has been growing, making great contributions to the national revolutionary cause and development. The agricultural sector has grown up rapidly, becoming a pillar of the national economy and contributing to curbing inflation, stabilizing the macro economy, ensuring social welfare and effectively supporting industrial, trade and service development. 
The National Assembly chairman urged the union and its all-level chapters to uh, the step up of the communications work to popularize the party's guidelines and the state's policies and laws on agriculture, farmers and rural areas. He noted that it's a must to have a new mindset, new methods and new determination, as well as encouragement and support to production and businesses households and agricultural cooperatives that play the core role in a socio-economic development in rural areas, especially in disadvantaged mountainous areas and those mainly inhabited by ethnic groups. The northern region's five-month rainy season is over and now is the ideal time for transportation projects to accelerate their progress. Several projects target a 20 to 30 percent increase in construction output compared to the previous period during this dry season to ensure that they are completed on schedule. This year, 200 heavy plant machinery and equipment have been assembled into 18 teams to complete 20 kilometers of roadbed earthwork for the Duyên Quang Hà Giang project. The contractor operates three shifts with an estimated monthly output of around 4 million US dollars. With adequate material sources and dumping grounds, we can accelerate progress by 15 to 20 percent compared to before. Many highway projects have divided road and bridge construction into separate packages, allowing contractors to be more proactive in their work. We have organized board pile construction teams to work around the clock. At the same time, personnel and equipment will operate from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. in the upper section. The National Assembly Standing Committee recently approved the government's proposal to add nearly $340 million to the public investment plan for projects with high disbursement progress. Twenty of the 22 resettlement areas for the Duyên Quang Hà Giang Expressway project are ready for construction, allowing Duyên Quang Province to commit to completing it in 435 days, one month ahead of schedule. Now, according to the development plan for 2021 to 2030, with a vision toward 2050, Barrier Vũng Tàu province aims to gradually reduce its fishing fleet and focus on selectively harvesting high-value marine resources. And to achieve this goal, the province is implementing various measures to supervise, guide and support fishermen in adopting sustainable fishing practices. Nguyễn Đình Ngọc with over 45 years in the trade, understand the ups and downs of the fishing industry. He sold two of his trawlers and invested nearly 281,000 U.S. dollars in building four geonesting boats for selective fishing. His operating costs have been half, while the value of his catch has tripled or quadrupled. We constantly think about how to preserve marine resources for the long term. As fishermen, we must take responsibility for the sustainability of our work and avoid depleting resources. The province's career transition plan for 2021 to 2025 aims to convert 125 geonating boats to recreational fishing tourism and bottom trawling. The province is restructuring its fishing operations, reducing the trawlers that deplete marine resources. Once the Ministry of Agriculture issues specific policies on job transitions, the province will submit a policy proposal to the Provincial People's Council to ensure that the local fishing industry aligns with the province's fishing capacity. Along with encouraging fishermen to comply with regulation on sustainable fishing practices, the province will offer financial aid for the transition to sustainable high-tech fishing and aquaculture. It will also focus on enhancing value-added processing to create new jobs for fishermen in their new roles. Coming up next on VTV News. Quang Ngai strives to eliminate temporary and dilapidated houses. And Bản Dốc Vietnam, the Tien China waterfall site, officially opened.
Welcome back to VTV News. Now, in recent years, replacing temporary and dilapidated houses has been a bright spot in sustainable poverty reduction in Quảng Ngãi province. This initiative has helped many poor and near-poor people obtain sturdy homes, rebuild their lives, and focus on developing production. With the support of more than 1,800 US dollars from the National Target Program for Sustainable Poverty Reduction, Ho Ngoc Nam's family has more funds to build a new house, replacing their previous makeshift house. Having a good quality house makes my family very happy. It motivates us to work hard and strive for a better life. Since 2021, Quang Ngai has supported repairing and constructing over 700 homes for poor and near-poor households. Nearly 4,300 homes received funding from the National Target Program for Sustainable Poverty Reduction and Social Economic Development in Ethnic Areas. In 2025, the province plans to allocate funds from these two national programs to repair and build approximately 4,000 homes for poor and near-poor households. Quang Ngai will continue to conduct reviews to assess housing needs based on existing conditions and further mobilize the community, agencies and businesses to support the province in securing resources for housing construction with the active involvement of the entire political system. In addition to funding from national target programs, efforts to eliminate temporary and dilapidated houses in Quảng Ngai and across the country have received significant support from businesses. One of them has contributed millions of US dollars to build thousands of houses for residents in Quảng Ngai, Phú Yên, Sóc Trăng, Trà Vinh, Hưng Yên and Lào Cai provinces. About 40,000 children are born with deformities every year, with hand deformities accounting for approximately one-third of these cases. St. Paul's Hospital has recently collaborated with leading pediatric orthopedic experts worldwide to examine and perform surgery on more than 120 children. This four-year-old girl was born with hand deformities, including a missing thumb and a hand bent in an L shape due to congenital radius deficiency. In her third orthopedic procedure, the doctor will use leg bones to reconstruct her radius. Previously, she had surgery to convert her index finger into a thumb and received a splint to help straighten her hand. Due to the defect, her right hand functions at only 20 to 30 percent. She can only write with her left hand, making daily activities difficult for her. Experts collaborated to determine the best treatment and surgical options for each child. Many children were found to have missed the optimal period for treatment or early screening during pregnancy. Polydactyly, syndactyly, and club hand are the most common deformities and all are challenging to treat. However, experts specializing in hand deformities now offer newer and more effective treatment methods for children. The deformities that are not common, but here there are many, many of them because they concentrate. So we see congenital malformations of the hand, uh, cerebral palsy, we see a trauma sequela and nerve injuries during the, the birth. The name is uh, obstetrical brachial plexus palsy. About 20 children are expected to undergo orthopedic surgery, with some receiving medical treatment prior to their operations. The Bàn Dốc Vietnam and De Tien China waterfall site was officially opened on Tuesday after more than a year of being trialed as the first cross-border tourist site between Vietnam and China. The inauguration ceremony took place in the area between the two checkpoints on either side of the falls. The event was co-organized by the Cao Bang Province People's Committee in Vietnam and the People's Government of Wang Xichang Autonomous Region in China. Tourist pick-up and drop-off activities are coordinated smoothly by travel agencies on both sides, with numbers strictly limited and all trips complying with the two sides' immigration laws. Visitors can enjoy a smooth trip to the falls, with immigration and control forces lined up to create favorable conditions for travel from both sides. 
according to the Banzup Waterfall Tourist Area Management Board. From September 15th last year until August this year, a total of 939 tourist delegations with 11,934 went to the falls. Gu Lao Cham is an island cluster belonging to a Tân Hiệp Island commune in Quảng Nam province. And this place is home to a traditional craft passed down through generations, weaving hammocks. And this past August, the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism awarded this unique traditional craft the title of National Intangible Cultural Heritage. The hammock is made from the red sycamore tree, a woody tree with dark green leaves and bright red flowers that grows on steep cliffs in summer. Making a hammock requires many complicated steps and is done entirely by hand. Ngo Thị Lê knows which trees can be used to weave beautiful hammocks. Only the young trees that have just sprouted can be used. The ideal size is about the width of your hand and they should be straight. The leaves and top parts are chopped off and only the middle section of the trunk is used. This section is beaten to extract the bark and soaked in spring water for over 10 days to soften the tough outer layer, gradually revealing the fibers inside. The tropical sun helps the bark fibers dry within one or two days. A skilled person takes about two to three months to weave a hammock. The first step, which is also the most challenging, is to braid the handle. The beginning must be shaped well and have additional cords woven neatly or it will sleep. If it sleeps during weaving, the hammock is considered ruined and cannot be used. The secret to creating a beautiful hammock lies in the weaver's even technique and precise measurements, ensuring that each loop on the hammock's body is uniform and attractive. The hammocks are sturdy due to the material, but even more importantly, they depend on the artisan's skills in twisting and joining the cords. Making these connections tight is crucial, ensuring no frayed ends at the joints. You shouldn't leave it out in the rain or direct sunlight. Keep it in a cold spot and it will remain durable. Only a handful of people in Gu Lao Cham know how to weave hammocks, but this doesn't lessen their value. These hammocks represent the artisan skills and carry a rich cultural heritage, reflecting the support and love of families for the fishing boat crews who bravely venture out to sea. Coming up next in our world news. North Korea blows up roads near South Korean border as tensions soar. And India and Canada diplomatic tensions increased. Now moving on to our world news. Tensions are escalating between North and South Korea following North Korea's accusation that South Korea violated Pyongyang's airspace with drones last week. North Korea has blown up several sections of an inter-Korean road and railway on the North Korean side the South Korean military said on Tuesday. Roads and railways, once considered symbols of inter-Korean cooperation, are no longer used. And in response, the South Korean military fired warning shots. However, the explosions did not cause any damage on the South Korean side of the border. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff has ordered military units to monitor Pyongyang's movements and prepare for possible retaliation. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un convened a national security meeting on Tuesday to receive a report on plans to respond to South Korea's activities, asserting the right to self-defense and considering military retaliation. The diplomatic relations between India and Canada hit new lows over the murder of a Canadian Sikh last year. Now Canada and India have announced the expulsion of each other's diplomatic staff. India's Ministry of External Affairs said it had asked six Canadian diplomats in New Delhi to leave the country by midnight this Saturday. India also announced the withdrawal of its diplomatic staff in Canada, including High Commissioner Kurma Verma. The moves came after Canada alleged that the Indian High Commissioner and other diplomats were involved in an ongoing Canadian investigation into the death of a Canadian Sikh in June last year. 
and India has denied the allegation. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel, along with the heads of the Cuban government and parliament, attended a march in Havana on Tuesday, expressing solidarity with the Palestinian people. The march, organized by the Communist Youth League of Cuba, was a call to end attacks against Palestinians and to work for peace in the Middle East. In addition to the leaders, representatives of mass organizations were also present at the march. Statistics show that over the past year, thousands of people in the Gaza Strip have become victims of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, with children being one of the most affected groups. In its high-speed rail development strategy, China prioritizes southern provinces to promote trade and shorten the geographical distance between the Chinese and ASEAN markets, comprising over 2 billion people. China's expanding high-speed rail network increasingly extends into ASEAN countries, driving development and facilitating travel for Chinese and ASEAN citizens. The nanning guiyang High-Speed Railway, one of the main routes in China's rail network, meets the significant transportation needs of Guangxi residents traveling from the south to southwestern China's Guizhou province. With a 350 km per hour design speed, the 490-kilometer journey takes just over two hours. Tickets are priced at approximately 31 USD, ensuring consistently high passenger demand. For short distances, less than five hours, I always take the high-speed train because it is both convenient and cheaper than taking a plane. The Nanning Guangzhou, Guiyang Guangzhou, and Nanning Kunming high-speed railways are important parts of the passenger transport channel in the difficult-to-reach coastal areas of western and southern China. It takes two to six hours to reach the border of Vietnam and Laos, the gateway to ASEAN, China's largest trading partner today. From Nanning, it connects with Kunming, Guiyang, Sichuan, Chongqing, Hunan, and Hubei, including Hong Kong and Guangzhou. From here, we can also get close to the Vietnam border, then go to Kunming, take a high-speed train to Laos, and visit more ASEAN countries. The procedures for entering and exiting the border between the two countries are very easy. Vietnam is a go-to destination for Chinese tourists. As high-speed railways from the south, such as Guangxi and Yunnan, connect to a growing number of rail lines across China, people in the south have many options when traveling to other parts of China and neighboring ASEAN countries. Now before we say goodbye, let's take a look at the weather forecast. And that's all the news we have for this hour. To rewatch our program, you can download our mobile app VTV Go or check out our YouTube channel VTV for Go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.